Welcome to Prison Professors. You're about to listen to the second episode of a two-part series with Badger. Badger is an incredibly interesting character. He was arrested when he was 17 years old. They locked him inside of a county jail with a 30-day sentence. But during those 30 days, he made decisions that resulted in him getting 12 years. And then while he was serving time in high-level prisons in the California Department of Corrections, he made some other adjustment decisions that ultimately resulted in him serving 21 years in prison. You are going to learn the outcomes of Badger's adjustment decisions, but more importantly, you're going to see that it is never too early and it is never too late to turn your life from struggle to a life of meaning and relevance and contribution, just as Badger has done. And if you want more inspiring stories like Badger's, please subscribe to the Prison Professors program, and we will continue to produce content every single day to show that regardless of where you are today, you can begin building your life of meaning, relevance, and contribution. Just make good decisions. Thanks. How many years did it take for you before you started feeling stable, if, if you feel stable now? So, yeah, it took a while because I was still with the life when I came out. I, I, was, I, I became a full-blown drug addict. Did you have problems with the law ever again after you came out? So I was on their radar, you know what I mean? In the beginning, I was, you know, my parole officer, uh, thank God for him, man. Thank God for him. You know, he, he was a huge black guy, you know, uh, and I was big at the time too, you know, I'm mean, just coming out of the joint, you know, I'm mean, pretty big, but his shirt would look like a dress on me, you know, he's all, uh, you know, this is one of the oldest numbers I've seen in a while and I want it back, you know, now <laughs> you could have it today, you know? Uh, what does that mean to somebody who's not familiar with the, the jargon? So, yeah, right. This is where I, this is where people lose me all the time on big Herc. I literally had on his fresh out prison show. I literally had to go on there and, you know, discuss what hard candy list was. You know, like everything I would say during the video, I'm speaking alien to the world, but you know, convicts knew what I was talking about, you know, Anyway, being put on the shelf, all kinds of stuff like that. So I went in there and did a whole breakdown of the language. So say it again. What are we asking? You said you said he wanted it was the oldest number he'd seen and he wanted it back. Walk us so through what that meant. I had an H number. Okay. So every in C D C you had they had uh I mean I had a B a D number. So they had A numbers, B numbers, C numbers, D numbers, uh E numbers, H numbers, you know, they just went the, the alphabet they have now they're on double numbers so like now they're uh, a b or c a or whatever the case may be the numbers that you guys don't have a uh a, a, a letter before your guys's number um no we just have numbers um but it's okay you so you guys had these letters and numbers in right. the california so that, department of corrections the pro are you saying that the parole officer understood from looking at your registration number you had a very old number correct and when That's he said he wanted it back does that mean he wanted you to go back to prison no he wanted me off parole he wanted he you wanted off parole number. yeah so he wanted to help you yeah, he basically, I, that's what he was saying, you know, and I didn't get why. Because the first words out of his mouth, I mean, if you want me to tell you, I'll tell you. You know, like some people have gotten upset on the one show and then they got with it, what I was saying. So he walks up to me and here I am with a bald head. You know, I have no housing. I can't be housed in a, and I got no housing. You know, I'm telling him I need help, you know. And he walks up and I'm just meeting him and he goes, uh, He's got my file in his hand and he walks up and he goes, I understand you're a nigger hate neo-Nazi. And I'm looking at this black guy. Go, oh my God. So I go, what? 420 Boucher street, which is our County jail. That's the address for our County jail. I'm thinking he's sending me back. And he goes, uh, don't worry about it. So am I. And I go, Hey man, whether you are or aren't, it doesn't matter. You know, like I'm not trying to run that way today. I don't live that way today. You know, I made a lot into the indoctrination that it was in, read to me in the state. Uh, I try not to live that way today. You know what I mean? And it's like he softened up to me real quick. When I started saying the right things, then I wasn't saying what he wanted to hear. I was saying what I truly felt. You know, at, at, you're right. At some point, a little inkling in me never wanted to return to prison. And, it, it's, and a part of me was anxious to get back. You said that you never wanted to return to prison. 
But on a scale of one, to, on a scale of one to ten, how ready were you to make decisions that would ensure you'd never return to prison? Yeah, about a seven. So you were like a seven. I, yeah, I was still with the the life to some degree, though. I was collecting taxes for certain whatever. I was doing things that criminal you were, activity. You were you were you were still involved in the criminal lifestyle. That's what you're saying. Correct. Correct. Okay. And how long did it take for you to break that cycle? So let me explain to you something. Most people think that you go to cal- you go to prison and you join an organization and you come out and you just forget that organization. You know what I mean? And then they go back and that catches up with them. You know, that bites them in the ass that they didn't do the things they said they would do for that organization. So when they returned, and I've seen that happen continuously repeatedly time and time again oh you got my word brother i'm gonna take care of that as soon as i get out and the next thing you know he's coming back on the same yard and next thing you know he's going out on an ambulance you know and I, that's not the story i wanted to tell you know that's not the journey i wanted to be on so, so you were active with gangs in prison and so when you came home you felt as if you had an obligation and a responsibility to continue with that lifestyle for a while well i absolutely did man i mean they got me th- through, I survived with their help. Got you know it. I mean, so I absolutely did. I owed my word was my bond back then, you know, like it still is today. But I also asked to walk away. You know what I mean? I, I'm not a dropout. I go to, if, you know what I mean? Like I, I try to do what you do. I, I speak at different places. I'm, I'm not allowed in the institution still. Um, but, you know, I'm real big in the program, Alcoholics Anonymous, Narcotics Anonymous, whatever the case may be. What kind of work are you doing now, Badger? So I work for the movie industry as I do. I'm a stagehand. Um, build stages, tear them down, you know, get the light shows ready, lighting, you know, all that. So, and there's no work right now. Yeah. Zero work due to the pandemic or whatever. This How has long been have you been in the movie? Ever. How long have you been in the movie business? So about two years. And how did you get into that business? So... Due to the program, you know what I mean? I had learned that if I want something, I can't lay around and go get it, and get it. It's not going to come to me. I'm not going to get a, duck, a job ducket. You know, I don't know how they do it in, in the feds, but you get a job ducket saying you're going to do this job inside. You know, I mean, you're going to be a, a tier tender. You're going to be working in the kitchen or whatever. It's called a job ducket. So, and I figured that nobody's going to send me a job ducket. You know what I mean? Like, I got to go get what I want to go get. My first job out here was working for the oil fields. So I worked at, for the oil fields in Bakersfield. I went from making no money to making a hundred thousand dollars a year. You know, it was just crazy. So, uh, and it was due to the places that I'd been and the people that I'd known that got me that job as well. You know, I, and how I long did you stay? In, how long did you stay in that job? Uh, roughly five years. And why you did know, you leave? I got hurt. Okay. You, you've yeah. also, but you've also got a, a successful YouTube channel. Tell us about that. How did you start that? So, Fresh Out, which is Big Herc's channel, had been asking me to come on and tell my story for a long time. And I'm like, yeah, bro, I can't, I can't do it. I'm not with it. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not with it. So, uh, plus I'll probably get in trouble. You know, that's how I looked at it. And finally, I, I'm, I still talk to the people from the institution on a regular basis. Uh, every week, as a matter of fact, you know, the people that I know and love. And I told him, I said, hey, this cat wants me to come on a show. And uh, he's basically focusing on doing what I do, trying to keep people out of prison or at least let them know what it's like if they should go to prison. So uh, they they gave me the green light. They said, go ahead. Just don't bring up any names or don't bring up, you know, any crimes that's going to get you or anybody else in trouble. And I was like, are you serious? So... You know, by that now I've been going to the program. I've learned to live a little bit. I've learned to stay out of myself and help my fellow man. You know, I mean, become a productive member of society. Basically, is that important to you now to be a productive member of society? Oh, like, it's all that matters to me because I, if I get stuck back in self, I'll be doing what I know I could do. You know, and that's crime. <laughs> so, you so know? you're working as a as a law abiding citizen right now and and trying to make your community better by keeping people out of prison. Is that right? Absolutely. That's my only focus. And so we can use this story about what you experienced. If you're going to look back right now to a young guy that's coming in, what advice would you give that young guy? 
about how to so, serve time? Don't be something you're not, man. You know what I mean? Like that's, that's a huge deal because so many people come in there, they want to feel accepted or be part of or feel safe, whatever the case may be. They want, they want that camaraderie. Uh, most people come from broken homes or, you know what I mean? They're drug addicts, you know, that things weren't going well out here for them, you know? And then they come in there and they get clean and they get their emotions back and they want to be part of something or they just want to feel safe, one of the two. Um, California is very segregated. It's control, you know, it's ran by race. You stick with your car, your car only. Um, so you can't really still be who you want to be. Like, I was an equal opportunity hater. I hated everyone at the time. You know I mean, like I just hated walking the track and saying, what's up to the same guys. You know, if I walked the track 17 times, I'd said, what's up 17 times that day. You know what I mean? Nod my head or whatever. And I got fed up here the same fucking stories, the same lies. Uh, just, you know, I'm like, didn't the homeboy just tell me that exact story? You know what I mean? Like, I'm just like, this is all just bullshit where I'm at. It's just, I woke up one day and I was old. You know what I mean? And I was like, I just never want to do this again, man. Uh, and I've worked very hard at that. You know, I've worked very hard at that. So, so, so Badger, I, I, I've told you during our preliminary call last night that my journey was different, that I walked in and I, my only focus was to come out of prison successfully. And I was lucky in the sense that I, I got inspired by books, a couple of books that I re read that really changed the way that I thought. And it made all the difference. I went to a high security penitentiary. I was there for eight years before I started to move to other prisons, but I never had a problem in prison. And one of the reasons that I was that way, Badger, and I want you to correct me or give your perspective on it, as I always heard from guys in there saying, the best way to serve time was to forget about the world outside and focus on your time inside. But one of the things that I did when I heard that message is that I would say, well, how does that work out for guys who pursue that path? And so I took so, yeah. just the opposite. I, I said, I only want to focus on success. And that influenced all of my decisions. How do you feel about that? No, you're right. I, I believe your journey was the better journey. Trust me, you know, because uh, if you're not focusing on the outside, guess what? When you come out here, you're not going to stay out here. You're not, you haven't laid plans, you know, you, uh, so they would they would tell me to go to school in there or whatever, and I would ditch that bullet. I'd buy my way out of going to school. I'd buy into a job instead or whatever the case may be. All I did was institutional shit. I didn't do anything to better myself to come out here. And you just seen we were just doing the the, the computer. Like I could have been learning in there how to use the computer. You know what I mean? I could have been out here knowing what to do or – Whatever, I just happened to have got blessed with some good jobs when I came out. And that's because my attitude, you know, my attitude. So our attitude's like, really important to have the right attitude. That's one of the parts of our course is to have the right attitude. So, oh, man, that's everything. So, so Badger, I'm going to tell you what our course is like because kind of coming to the end of this episode and I, and I want to run it by you. And I'll tell you what we try to teach, but it would be great for somebody with your experience and your wisdom and your, what you've seen to give me your commentary on it of what it would have been like had I reached you. I'll tell you a story. I was in, I do go into prisons across the country. And a lot of times when I go into prisons, people will look at me and they, and they think that I was never in jail, you know, <laughs> and I was there for 26 years. Compliment. Yeah. Well, that's what I look at it as. Cause I said, that was the plan. And that's what I want for people that go through this course. But I know they need to hear from people like you as well. And I was in, uh, I went to the ADX, the Supermax in, in Florence, Colorado, and while I was there, I met uh, Tommy Silverstein, who right. is widely credited as being one of the leaders of, or the founders of the Aryan Brotherhood. And when we were speaking, he said to me, you know, I wish that I would have gotten this message when I was 17 and I was starting my sentence and I probably would have taken a different journey through prison. But because I took the journey I have, I'll never get out of prison. And he knows that. And I've met a lot of guys in prison that have written me and told me that, but you're, you're, you're in real time. You're not in prison. Most of my clients, most of the people with whom I work are still locked up. And I try to help people make decisions that will get them on the right track. And you're, you have the opportunity right now to give that message to, to, to guys 
in jails and prisons. And so I want to tell you about our program and get your perspective on it. Is that okay? Absolutely. So, so, so Badger, if you were coming into prison and I had the opportunity to tell you, one thing is my belief is that just because I'd been in prison for 26 years, once you learned that, that I'd been, that might make you somewhat willing to listen to what I had to say. Is that accurate? Right. Okay. Yeah, sure. Yeah, you got it. You know, there's some substance to what you're saying. You've been there, done that. So yeah, absolutely. So when I looked at these young men or older men, and I told them, look, I was there for 26 years, but my experience is different from most people who serve a quarter century in prison. And right. I want you to have a good experience, Badger. So I would have told you this. The first thing we're going to do is I'm going to ask you, how do you define success? Do you define success? Which path would you take? I want to have a reputation as a shot caller and being able to call the yard, or I want to make sure that I can get out of here at the soonest possible time, be able to function in society, get a job and be successful. Which path would be more successful to you? Which would you prefer? So I went with the first one, obviously. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I ran, but ran I, no, I'm, not, I'm not asking what you did. I'm saying if I gave you that, which would you choose? I'm going to give you these two options. Which is more important to you? Run the yard? or get out of here and be successful at the soonest possible time? So I'll give you my honest answer. My honest answer would be, it depends on how much time is still ahead of me. So when, I'm, when I met you, you had 12 years. Okay. And 12, you were just so starting 12 years. You got a 12 year sentence and you had three years in by the time you got to the prison and by the time you got exposed to this program. And now you know that you've got potentially nine years. Potentially you could get less. Potentially you could get more. But right Correct. now, you've got a solid nine. And the okay. decisions you make are going to influence whether maybe you get out in six, maybe you get out in 20. Was that, would you be interested in saying, I want to do better, or no, I want to run the yard? So in today, I, yeah, I want to do better. Because, I mean, obviously, the sooner you start doing better, it becomes it becomes indoctrinated into your mind. Whatever I got, you're doing. I got a letter yesterday from a woman who is in CDCR. Her husband is. Wish I could find it. Probably could find it here if I. If I I'm sure I can find it. Um, her husband. Well, I'll just I'll just give you the story because it's probably not good for me to give the names. Um, was a, is a guy that's in CDCR. He's already been in for 20 years, and he just got charged in an Aryan Brotherhood case, and he's in Sacramento jail right now with a bunch of other guys. Yeah, I know the case. And the wife wrote me and told me the guy, who is 50, um, and told me that he's going through my programs right now in CDCR and asking me to send him more books and more courses because he wished he would have had that at the start of his sentence. So this is a guy that's already hard and core, but he's getting this message when now he's facing life in prison. Um, yeah, that'll, that'll wake you up. <laughs> and, it's, and, and Badger, you and I have an opportunity to give this message to people who are at the start of their journey. And it would just be helpful, I think, to them if you told them, hey, I used to choose the wrong path. This is what I've learned. This is what I think is better. And what, that's what I'm asking you. What do you think is better? To be focused on success or focused on running the yard? No, yeah, focus on success. Absolutely. And, and that's, don't say that because you think it's what, obviously Absolutely I'm nobody. I'm, no, you, no, I'm, I don't do that. I don't, I don't sugarcoat nothing for nobody. Yeah, so. it's, better, it's better to be thinking about that. And so, so, so that's the first lesson in our courses. That's the first thing a man has to do is say, what do I want? How do I define success? And if I define success as I want to run the yard, well, then you got to own that and own everything that comes with it. And it could potentially mean spending the rest of my life in here. Or, or being say, killed. Yeah, or get killed, or it could mean I want to do something else. And if you want to do something else, that takes you to the next course. And the next, if, it, if, you don't want to, if you don't want to be successful, then you don't go to the next course. But right. if you want to be successful, the next course is you've got to set some really clear goals. Very clear. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay? So, so, so you would say, I would say for me, it was very important to get an education. It was very important to contribute to society. But that's what I did by writing books. That's when I started writing. It would be successful for me to find a network of very positive people in society that would become in my network instead of negative. That would be, that's the second course. So How for me, it, for me, I had to go to Narcotics Anonymous program and work the steps. 
I had no way, no knowing on how to live. And everybody else told me who I was. You know what I mean? Like, does that make sense? I was very impressionable. It does throughout, make sense. Throughout, throughout my whole prison career, I was very impressionable. You know, what you thought of me mattered. What you think of me today does not matter. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, okay, I'm soft because I'm out here helping people, whatever the case may be, you know. Because uh, a lot of people, that, you know, you could, as you know, you can cure cancer on YouTube and get a whole bunch of negative comments, you know what I mean? And that shit used to affect me. Nothing anybody says about me today affects me. So your self-worth is has to come first and foremost, and I learned that through the program. You know what I mean? I learned. And, and uh, now you're teaching in. somebody else that and somebody that's going to respect you. I, one thing I know, Badger, is there's a group of people, maybe because of the way that I look or the way that I talk, that will never listen to me. And that's why Absolutely. I try to get different voices on here to say, hey, this isn't my message. My message was always, I want to be successful in society. And I was in general population all 26 years, 9,500 days in prison high security, medium security, low security. But I always define success as saying, when I get out of jail, I'll go into any room and nobody will know I served a day in prison unless I told them. And that influenced every decision for me and it made opportunities open for me that I want to open for other people. And I want you to help me do that by just validating, does this make sense to you in light of what you've seen? So experience. basically they're looking at the messenger. <laughs> you know what I mean? You mm -hmm. don't have the tattoos all over you. You don't have, you know what I mean? You don't have born to lose tattooed across your forehead. You know what I mean? You look like an, uh, uh, an educated guy. You know what I mean? I probably wouldn't have listened to you in the beginning as well, but as like, as we get older, we start going, Hey man, <laughs> the student may have known what he was talking about. You know, you think back on some of the things that your grandfather may have told you and, everything that they laid out for you was true, you know? Uh, so people look up to you right now and you've got credibility to speak to that mindset and whether they accept it or not is not my choice. I know that that's who I was when I was 15 as well, when I was 17. I wouldn't have, I, many people tried to get me on the right track, but I was making bad decisions as a young man and that's what led to me getting a 45 year prison sentence. So- the Chasing that money or whatever, right? Yeah, just I was I made bad decisions as a kid that I right. wish I, I made better decisions. It's okay, you know. That's part of you said. That's part of the journey, and we perfect. are what we learn. And I learn to if it, there, it's never too early and it's never too late to start making better decisions. I didn't start making better decisions until I was already convicted, but fortunately, it was before I I got a forty five year sentence because I was facing life and. Could have very easily gotten life. My judge gave me 45 years and that, that I was already on a path to say, I'm going to change my life. So the next step in the course, Badger, is if you've defined success and you've set clear goals, the next step is to have the right attitude and say, my attitude is going to be always consistent with how I define success. So if I want to be a shot caller, I would make decisions that way. If I want Correct. to be a business person, I'd make decisions that way. And I try to show people, does that make sense to you, to somebody? Anybody with any intelligence whatsoever would go be nodding their head right now going, yeah, he's right. You know what I mean? Because attitude is everything. Attitude, attitude is everything. And I heard everything. you say that earlier. And that's actually the first lesson of the course. After you've identified success and goals, we say it all begins with attitude and you got to have the right attitude. I can't say if I wanted to be a shot caller in prison, I couldn't do it halfway. I'd have to be a hundred percent committed. Okay. Right. And I'd have to own what comes with it. But if exactly. I want to be a successful businessman or a successful citizen or successful in getting out, I also have to have the right attitude. One of the funny things I used to tell guys when I go in jail, that badger, is I said, if I went to a yard and I told somebody, how I'm going to run this yard. I'm a shot caller about how long would it take before somebody would say bullshit, <laughs> right? About a minute and a half. No, about a second and a half, right? Yeah. 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 It's no different out here. If you right. say you want to succeed in society and you go to an, uh, 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 meet with an employer and you don't look right and you don't talk right and you don't express yourself right, it takes about a second and a half for you to get rejected. It's a wrap. Yeah, you're done. You don't Absolutely. actually, even the way you walk, the way you talk, 
everything about you influences it, just like in prison. So you've got to, you've got to anticipate. I don't complain about that. That's just the way the world is. I know I, I've always said I will never be employable. Nobody will ever give me a job because they're going to look and say, this guy was in prison for 26 years. And I don't care. I mean, I'll make my own job. But right. I, I, I know that I live with the consequences of the decisions that I made when I was 20 years old. And, and everybody listening to this is going to make decisions that way as well. That's what our course is about. And you've heard it from me um, if you've been going through the program. But now you've heard it from Badger, a guy who has enormous respect in the, in the California Department of Corrections, a guy that did 21 years, even though he could have gotten out after 20 days, a guy, right. <laughs> a guy that has learned a lot from his experience. And now what he says he wants to do is help people and make society a better place and help uh, kids avoid the, the, the turmoil and trauma that he endured. And so I really just want to thank you, Badger, for, for giving us your, your wisdom and your experience. And um, I, I want to ask you before I even do this, is it, is it okay to send this into the California Department of Corrections or would you rather we just send it to other prisons? No, absolutely, man. Like, yeah, I'm known well in the system, trust me. You know, people... They go, who, what happened to the legend that I grew up hearing stories about? Well, what happened to him was he decided he wanted to never go back to prison, you know, and I've had to make some, some very serious decisions behind that. You know what I mean? And I had to not be concerned about what the next individual thinks about me. You know, uh, I just, I spent a, an hour and a half on the phone the other night with a kid from New Zealand who I accidentally called him and I'm so grateful that I did. Uh, he was talking about he wanted help. He was thinking about committing suicide uh, with benzos and beer. And I, I texted him. I go, that sounds like a badass song, benzos and beer. You know what I mean? Like just joking around. And I ended up calling him. His dad's a cop. The house is full of turmoil. And I asked him, I said, are you part of the problem or part of the solution? You know what I mean? You're living under their roof. Are you helping? Are you becoming, you know, are you collateral damage? You know what I mean? Like, Take your dad, ask him to go for a walk, have a talk with him and see what you could do to better your household. When we hung out, the kid was smiles and, you know, like, that's the, what I do things for, man. I felt so good inside. He did felt that, so did good Did that inside. originate from your channel? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. He watches the channel. He got at me through Instagram. And I get, I get those all day long. I'm always talking, getting at these kids. You know, I don't want to be that guy who talks about doing something. Hang on. So it's saying low battery. I'm going to plug in again, so we may have a little bit of problems for What's well, okay. We're almost done, so see if we can just get it on for a second. But I'm going to – in those areas, what I can do is I can, I can stream because I want to show the people your page and, and let people know the positive message that you're giving right now. Um, right. But before we go, could you tell us a little bit about how you started the channel and how, how much you, you, can, you contribute to it right now? So – like I said, I had gone on fresh out several times. Uh, I did like 17 interviews with them and they were like, Badger for president, you know, Badger, you know, all this and that. So they were, everybody was saying, you need to start your own channel. You need to start your own channel. And it just so happened, I was just quitting a job and I needed a place to go, you know, and somebody out and Simi Valley had said, hey, I could rent you a room. But his plan was for me to go out there and for him to start a channel with me. So, and that's what happened. I went out there. He's all, hey, man, you should probably start a channel. You know, you can live here for free. And we started the channel together. Uh, some things happened and we're, we're no longer doing the channel together, but we're still, we're cool with each other now. You know what I mean? Like some things that happened. Uh, like I said, I'm not very smart with computers. So he was able to take money that I didn't know about. Some things happened. You know what I mean? And But did you, uh, do you run the channel now? I'm the only one who runs the channel, yeah. How often do you publish videos? So, well, it depends on, you know, mood and what's going on out here. Uh, I, my Patreon is what I look, I mostly publish for today, but I still have to send to YouTube to get the Patreon members. Patreon is what they, they, could I say my story is to be sold, not told. You know what I mean? Like I had to pay for that all the time in ad tag or whatever the case may be, you know, CD cute or ad tag or shoe. So I paid for all that, you know, this story to be told. And that's what I do. I sell my story. You know, how many uh, people do you have on your channel, Badger? 
So if I get an average, I have about a hundred thousand people that watch it, but it's, I have like 35,000 subscribers. Now, not everybody subscribes because they don't, you know, everybody subscribed to everything. They'd just be full of sure. subscribers. So, but the, I, on the analytics, it shows, you know, about a hundred thousand different people watch my channel. Uh, the age group is, uh, 18 to, I think 50, you know, do you earn a living from, from, does your, does your YouTube channel support you? So right now it does do that. I'm not working yet, you know, in the industry right now. So it's been, yeah, keeping me okay. You know, I'm okay. You, that's, that's encouraging in and of itself. And that's one of the lessons that I teach people in prison is that you've got to anticipate that with a criminal background, there's a good chance you might not be so easy to get employed or get a job. Or if the uh, economy goes, don't ever think that. Don't ever go into anything with that mindset, man. Tell me about I went, it. I went and said, I'm going to get every fucking job I go to get. And I okay. did. I got every job I go to get. I okay. went and got an oil fields job. The guys before me had experience in the oil fields. You know what I mean? I had wrote down some funny shit on there. I said, uh, it says anything you'd like to say about yourself. And I wrote down, yeah, I got common sense, right? Well, it said that I had uh, nine years at IDL. So he's asking me, now, mind you, there was two guys before me that had worked in the oil fields, had experience, all this and that, and I had nothing. So he, he calls me back due to, I got the interview because of where I was staying at a halfway house type thing. And his brother-in-law was the guy who ran the house. He said, go talk to him. Anyway, I go to talk to him that he said, it wouldn't, doesn't mean you're going to get the job. You know what I mean? But go talk to him. So I wrote down IDL nine years, whatever. And then, you know, anything you'd like to say about yourself? Yeah, I got common sense. And uh, he, he asked me, he goes nine years at one job. That's good. You know, I go, uh, he goes, what is IDL? And I go inmate day labor. <laughs> He's like, <laughs> hang on man it says here you got common sense i go yeah i learned it along the way you know what i mean like just i, I was funny to him you know what i mean he's, he's oh man just be here tomorrow morning you know and that bathroom at that shop probably hadn't been cleaned since the 70s the toilets were just blown out and just it was ugly grease everywhere right so after about a week of being there i came in early one morning i stripped it down i buffed you know what i mean cleaned that bathroom painted the walls i i grinded down the yellow stains off the toilets and it looked like a brand new bathroom right so the, the boss comes in and he's like, all oh, you fucking hands get over here so we, everybody's running over there and he's all who did that to my goddamn bathroom i'm like man i can't do nothing right you know what i mean I go, yeah, that'd be me, boss. You know what I mean? He's all, get your ass in my office. I'm like, oh, shit. So I go to his office. He goes, why'd you do that? And I go, well, for starters, I like to use a clean restroom. You know what I mean? Like, and I was grateful for the job, to be honest with you, you know? So just trying to give back however I could. And he goes, giving back, it means going to work. And I go, yeah, well, I went to work for free. You know what I mean? He goes, where do you want to work? And I told him where I wanted to work. I picked the the best duty you could ask for offshore you know what i mean down in long beach and he's uh this was on a monday you know he's all come in every morning sign in sign out sign in sign out and then go home and i like, go home so i got paid an entire week's worth of wages for doing that bathroom you know what i mean the following monday i was to report for duty in long beach so i got top shelf duty you know within within two months i was a driller so I went from a standard hand, you know, calling, being called a worm, you know what I mean? To being a driller within two months, you know what I mean? Cause I paid attention to everything. I didn't, during break, I didn't talk to other dudes, yucking it up, <laughs> telling lies and shit. I was picking up cigarette butts and picking up trash around there and just, you know, still doing something and just not being involved with other people. You know, I already had a different mindset than everybody else. I'm like, man, I'm going to be successful at everything I do. I started thinking like you're saying. And I, I did just that, you know, people told me, man, you ain't going to get a job in the movie industry. I was like, watch me. You know what I mean? It was like a spite thing. Watch me. I went down, I went down there. I was there at four 30 in the morning and I stayed. And then you, there's a big line. You got to, you know, every three months they have a big line. You got to stand in that line. And you know, I'm here, I'm standing in that line and I got nothing to offer. Once again, my personality got me the job. You know what I mean? Like I was, they come out say, anyway, whatever. I was joking around, but not rudely. You know what I mean? I didn't interrupt anybody. You know, I was joking around a little bit, but still being 
whatever. I got the job due to my personality, okay? And what did I do when I got there? Same exact thing. Same exact thing. I didn't sit around with the fellas at lunchtime or break time trying to get everyone's phone number and be friends with anybody. I was there to work, and I put in my work. I, I break when I'm supposed to break. And, you know, like, I just keep everything above board. I am who I am, and this is me. You know what I mean? That's how I lay it out. And it's that same personality that's gotten him 100,000 followers on YouTube. Uh, he's, a girl, he's an individual who's learned a lot along the way, and I think we can all learn a lot from Badger. And we'll be putting a link in the show notes below to Badger's channel, which is, what is it called? OG Badger's Heavy Hitters. OG Badger's Heavy Hitters. Um, I'll, I'll flash it. I flashed it during the video editing, and we'll definitely put a link to it. And just want to thank you for, for being a part of our, uh, of our program where we're taking your positive message inside of jails and prisons across America. No, thank you for bringing a positive message because, you know, them institutions don't have no positive message, not even from the, the counselors, just do nothing. You know what I mean? You're the guy. You're the guy bringing it. So You're the guy, and we're grateful for you for coming on. Thanks so much, Badger. Respect, bud. <laughs> you know?